Tonight on SCTV News, SHIP is preparing for a family-filled weekend. And print out those resumes. Networking opportunities are coming your way. All that and more right now. Thanks for joining us on SCTV News. I'm Jake Rom. And I'm Katie Swigert. Wi-Fi and a bathroom break, a great combination for active Shippensburg students. You have noticed the building under construction at the trailhead on North Earl at Fort Street. If you haven't, all the more reason to stop by and check it out. Construction began on the Comfort Station in May, and workers are in the final phase of the project. Shippensburg Township Supervisor Steve Olt said that trail users and the public can use the facilities while the finishing work is completed. Minor stuff, we're tweaking the security. Uh, we have good security with cameras. Um, you know, we have intrusion alarms and everything, and we're going to have automatically locks of the doors at 11 o'clock at night and then open in the morning and making sure that uh, everything is, is wrapped up. Just a few. We're 98% complete. Remaining work includes the landscaping in the parking lot, sealing the concrete, and finishing advertising cabinets on the exterior. The Comfort Station is more than just a bathroom facility. It was built with special events in mind. Uh, to be able to um, sell stuff out of here if we want, uh, make reservations and take things if we're having um, 5Ks or other events here. Wi-Fi will eventually be available to visitors once cost details are worked out. Total construction costs are close to $100,000. More than $60,000 was secured through grants. Shippensburg Township is funding the balance and all operational costs. The Comfort Station project is a joint effort of the Shippensburg Rotary Club, the Cumberland Valley Rails to Trails Conservancy, Shippensburg Township, and Shippensburg University. A grand opening and ribbon cutting event is planned for the end of October. Until then, take a hike or get a bike or however you want to enjoy the trail. Just get out there and enjoy it. For SUTV News, I'm Meredith Booker. The rideshare bikes that you can borrow at the library are a great way to get to know the trail. This Saturday, SHIP is celebrating friends and family. This year's Family Day, guests are invited to enjoy brunch with President Carter, a backstage tour of the Lur Center, and much more. To RSVP your family and friends, visit SUTVnews.com. Saturday morning's Henderson Gym is the place for the people with disabilities to come play basketball. Inclusive <coughs> Basketball is a program where students can work, play, and learn with people of all abilities. At the start, the goal was for the social work and gerontology departments to gain experience working with community members who have a disability. It has since expanded to include students' participants from all majors, many coming back year after year. It's fun. And at the same time, you're also helping people learn different things. And, you know, you get to make other people happy at the end of the day. Inclusive Basketball has been running for 11 years. If you want to join, the organization meets Saturday mornings at 11. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is quickly approaching. The Women's Wellness Center is hosting the second Bras Across Campus event. Students and faculty are invited to join to learn about breast health in an interactive way. I would say that it raised a lot of awareness on campus to um, the fact that young women could get breast cancer. Um, most young women don't think that they can. They think it's kind of like an issue for like women in their 40s or 50s. But um, I think that this event really kind of raised awareness to the fact that young women could also suffer from breast cancer. The event will be held in October behind the library. SHIP, the contest has begun. The Outdoor Nation Campus Challenge has taken over once again. More than 500 Shippensburg students are going head-to-head -head in this nationwide challenge. Groups and individuals can sign up at any time to log outdoor activities for points. Listen while Mac Hawkins gives the scoop. So I was involved in this last year and we did really well. We were eighth in the entire country. And this year when I heard we were doing it again, I mean, why not? It's, it's a really fun contest. It gets people that aren't normally outside, outside. Well, you heard him. Get out and get active to win points for SHIP. There have been several hurricanes this season, but more still could be in the making. Maria may not be the last hurricane, with the U.S. only halfway done with its hurricane season. 
And there's a pretty good chance we'll see some more hurricanes or at least some tropical storms that get named. Um, some of them may turn into large systems. Um, there's a couple that are floating out there uh, in the Atlantic that could develop as well uh, after Maria. Hurricanes and tropical storms are expected to continue to form and migrate until mid-October. The Shippensburg University Career Fair is coming to campus on October 5th. I sat down with Sarah Shook, the Associate Director of the Career and, Communi and Community Engagement Center, to find out more about the upcoming event. Different employers and organizations have a table where they're advertising for open positions. And for this event, they'll mainly be advertising for full-time internship and part-time opportunities. From 1230 to 4. For more information, go to shift.edu slash career and click on the Upcoming Events tab. This week is Resident Assistance Week. We caught a glimpse of what it's like to be an RA on campus. Sean Rapp has a story. Bailey Albert is a senior communication journalism major and is one of the RAs for McCune Hall. She is part of the Student Media Living Learning community in McCune. LLCs are groups of students sharing social and academic interests. The Student Media LLC staff gives weekly seminars about being involved in the field. And anyone can be a part of it. They don't just have to be in the certain wing. Um, anyone can join it. There are many responsibilities involved with being an RA. To be able to give them resources, whether that would be, hey, I'm failing this test, I need to go, like where should I go? While being an RA may look easy, it certainly has its challenges. RAs provide a variety of services, from helping locked out residents to dealing with roommate conflicts. RAs have rigorous training to prepare them for their job. Each day is something different, like one day you'll have diversity and that teaches you all about being diverse and not just like race, but gender and sexism and ageism. RAs also have to go through role play training where they deal with real life problems they may face in the dorms. Another day will be suicide prevention and like that's a really heavy day. And then another day it can be about how to do a roommate conflict. One of the biggest challenges RAs face is time management. I'm also a student and I'm also a daughter and I'm also a friend and a worker at a different job. But time constraints don't keep RAs from making connections with students. And it's just really interesting that in just a short amount of time you have 34 new people in your life that you can communicate with. Being an RA can even help you out with future employment. It looks really great on your resume. It, because um, it shows that you know how to communicate with people, you know how to problem solve. All in all, Albert enjoys being an RA. It is a roller coaster of emotions. It's, um, one minute you're like doing a lockout and the next minute you're going to class and the next time you have a meeting, but all in all. If you're interested in learning more about an RA position, head over to SHIP Career Connection page on SHIP.edu. And if you would like to, be, to join an LLC, go to SHIP.edu slash living learning community. Shippensburg University's Public Relations Student Society of America will be hosting an event, Ethics in the Professional Field. There will be two professional public relations guest speakers. Robert Saline, founder of PR Works, specializes in brand and reputation development, communicates in research and strategy, and crisis communications. Jason Kirsch, adjunct professor at York College, specializes in marketing and public relations. PRSSA president Caitlin Wilson organized the event. We want marketing students to come, we want business students, we want uh, we want others besides PR majors to come because ethics is so important in any sort of job. The event will be held next Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 in the Orndorff Theater. Please come dressed business casual. When we come back in world news, tensions heighten in Kenya after a re-election. Stay with us. Country is living in the dark after a devastating natural disaster. Here's Madeline with the world news. Maria, causing 100% power loss. Governor Ricardo Rosella stated that people have gone into survival mode. The amount of damage is still unknown and will remain that way until officials can do a flyover. The storm is now moving to the Dominican Republic. In Mexico, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit 75 miles southeast of Mexico City Tuesday afternoon. Over 230 people were killed after the powerful earthquake. Rescue crews raced to find a little girl who was trapped under the rubble of a collapsed school building. This is the second earthquake to hit Mexico in the same month. This also happened to be to occur on the anniversary of the 8.0 magnitude earthquake in 1985. 
In Kenya, the Supreme Court nullified the re-election of the current president, Uhuru Kenyatta. The vote held in August was deemed tainted by irregularities. The main challenger, Raila Odinga, appealed to the Supreme Court saying voting had, been, had not been conducted according to the Constitution. The Supreme Court ordered the new vote to be held in 60 days. In New York, the 72nd regular session of the UN General Assembly convened on September 12th with the general debate opening on September 19th. Agenda items include education, environmental conventions, and trade. The session introduces some new faces, including President Donald Trump, who brought his America First stance to the meeting. Trump also brought up the North Korean and Iranian nuclear program. That's it for World News, now back to the desk. When we come back, tomorrow is the first day of fall. But it feels like summer weather is here to stay. Stay tuned for this week's forecast. You know, Jake, I know I said tomorrow is the first day of fall, but it really doesn't feel that way. You know, I'm really sick and tired of this summer weather. I'm ready for the fall. Let's go to Kyla with the weather. Thankfully, Hurricane Maria will be missing the east coast of the United States as she moves further into the Atlantic Ocean. It looks like we will be able to get away with wearing shorts for one more week with sun and high temperatures. Tonight will be clear and 76, and tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high of 84. For the five day, the weekend will be beautiful. Expect sunny skies and highs in the 80s. Monday and Tuesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 88. Wednesday, expect sun and humidity with a high of 82. Have a great weekend and head over to Entertainment with Christy. It's almost time for homecoming at SHIP. This year's theme is SHIP Is It. There will be a lot of fun events this year, starting with bubble soccer on Tuesday, October 17th, from 3 to 6 p.m. on the rec fields. Battle of the Campus will be on Wednesday, October 18th, from 4 to 6 p.m. in the academic quad. A lip sync battle will take place on Thursday, October 19th, at 9 p.m. in Memorial Auditorium. On Friday, October 20th, from 8 to 9 p.m. in the SHIP rec, a spirit rally will pump everyone up for the game on Saturday. Also on Friday, there will be a, sh a ship swag bingo from 9 to 11.30 p.m. in the Cub NPR. Finally, on Saturday, a homecoming party will end this week from 10 to 2.30 a.m. in the Cub NPR. That's a lot of activities to celebrate homecoming. To see all the details again, go to sutvnews.com. Looking for inspiration? Think about your favorite movie. That's what rapper Drake did for his newest tattoo. He recently got a tattoo depicting Denzel Washington's character in the 1990 movie, Mo Better Blues. This is not the first time the rapper has inked celebrities on his body. He already has Lil Wayne and Said among others. Kevin Hart, comedian and actor, faces bumpy roads in an extortion case. An anonymous person attempted to blackmail Hart and expose him for cheating. The anonymous person demanded money, threatening to release video evidence. Fighting back, Hart took to Instagram and apologized publicly to his wife and kids for his mistakes. The case is still being reviewed by officials, and Hart now focuses on mending broken ties. That's this week's entertainment. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Christy. When we come back in sports, Ship's football team keeps their winning streak. And a Ship field hockey player takes top honors and traveled a long way to get The Red Raider football team defeated Clarion on Saturday 31 to nothing. Shippensburg was led by a dominating performance by quarterback Ryan Zapatiki. He finished the game with 340 passing yards and two touchdowns. The win moves the Red Raiders to 3 and 0 on the year and coach Mack is pleased with the growth of his team. Uh, again, our, our guys are playing with confidence. Our guys have passion. They play with emotion. They play with pride, which is all good stuff. Um, you know, we we we're, we're doing some good things, uh, and we need to clean up some things and do them a little bit better, and uh, hopefully we can continue to get better every week. Shippensburg kicks off their conference schedule at East Stroudsburg on Saturday. The Raiders' next home game is September 30th against Lock Haven. Jasmine Petrantonio, a freshman field hockey player originally from Argentina, earned two honors this week. Petrantonio was named PSAC Athlete of the Week and NFHCA Player of the Week. She adds that it is her first accomplishment as a collegiate athlete and it was earned with the help of her team. Uh, it's something that we accomplish as a team. Um, 
I'm part of this big family, this big team, and um, I really own that to my team too because they're part of this too. The women will head to Mansfield this Saturday at 6 p.m. A women's volleyball player was named PSAC Athlete of the Week after a dominating performance last weekend. Sophomore Kendall Johnson's performance included a three-set win over Charleston and a four-set win over Fairmont State. Johnson tied her career high of 14 kills against six-time defending champion Wheeling Jessup. She racked up eight more kills against Fairmont State and seven kills against West Liberty. Shippensburg hosts Gannon this Friday at Heigus Fieldhouse at 7. That's it for sports. Let's head back to the desk. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Katie Swigert. And I'm Jake Rahm. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram at SUTV News. And check out our website, SUTVNews.com. We'll see you next time.